So, following on from myself and Jamie's challenge here at the beautiful Baden Hall Fishery on Lodgepool, I thought, what a better place to come than to show you a basics guide to feeder fishing. Honestly, folks, you'll have seen me set up on that day and we're going to do exactly the same thing. It really, really couldn't be simpler. There's a few component parts that you need, but once you get into the fishing, get used to the feeding, it is the most simplest thing. So first things first, uh, we're going to go through through the setup. What I want to talk you through is what rods you would need for, you know, said situation. Now, bearing in mind today we're casting Oh, the island's sort of 30 yards away so we're going to be casting up towards the island which i'll explain more when we actually get fishing why i'm casting there um so you want rods in sort of like the 10 or 11 foot category uh nothing bigger nothing smaller nice and simple so i've got an 11 foot rod here just so i can get ease to where i'm fishing real size next now it's a little bit different to waggler fishing in that you you probably need a, a bigger reel you know more of a powerhouse a bit of a workhorse so you want a four thousand or a 5,000 size reel, just to cope with, you know, uh, conditions on the day, if that wind suddenly got up, or, you know, if you weren't on, you know, uh, lakes with an island in, you wanted to chuck a little bit further, it'll just cope with all that. Next thing, reel line. Don't let it complicate you folks, honestly. It's not, um, nothing complex, six pound up to eight pound maximum, because you're not chucking little, little babby light wagglers or anything like that. You're chucking some, at, you know, sort of 20, 30, 40 grams, so, um, it doesn't matter if you're using thick main line. So I'm using the Preston uh, sinking feeder line today, but you know, any decent brand out there, Maximas, you know, stood the test of time, that kind of thing. So six or eight pound. Don't need any shot leads or anything like that. You know, I won't go into detail. And that's it. Lightest tips as well, obviously. With, with, you're going to catch everything on these kind of waters. Obviously, there's a lot of carp in here, but we're coming for like the skimmers and the bream. Now, I'll always advocate using the lightest tip possible. So usually if your rod comes with sort of like, you know, two or three tips, put them in your fingers. I've showed you before in one of these basics guides and just use the one that drops the furthest, you know, that's the lightest tip. Usually they'll have a mark on them, but if they've not, that's how you're checking. Uh, so this one's a, it's an ounce tip, the lightest one I've got. So I'll just wrap that line round there and I'm going to go through the simplest way of setting the feeder up in your wide world ever folks honestly it does not get any simpler but as i said there's a few component parts that you need so first thing being is your little swivelly snap is it snap link is it snap link swivel reset yeah snap link swivel so get one of these now with the uh preston cage mess feeders that i'm using today you actually get one of these attached so nice and simple all i've done first is taking that off the feeder and all we do with that is just slide it on our main line i'll try and go nice and slow for reshard he's zoomed in on that reshard he's on it he, he's on it so that goes through your main line so we can have that up there the next thing you will need uh, is some of these stops, some of these uh, rubber, large or medium stops, the Preston stops. Uh, that's because I'm going to attach it with a twizzle boom. You need that uh, snap link swivel to come back nice and neat and rest against uh, one of these stops. So I've already got some here. So I'm just going to put a couple of them on. Again, get nice and still for Richard to zoom in. He's there. You're on it today, mate, isn't you? So line through the little loop on the wire get two of the rubbers and then just yank pull them onto the line get rid of them so you see now that's what you're left with yes yeah, so i've got two of the rubbers on there onto the line now we don't need to worry about them for a bit so we can slide them right the way up the line now what i want is a good sort of 14 or 16 inches of line spare this end so i can do my twizzle boom it's more than enough but i just want to make sure i've got plenty the next thing to consider is tying your loop for your hook length so double that line over so you've got a little loop there and i'm just going to create just a simple double overland loop dead simple you know if you use one of them sort of like hooky things that rich and jay show me how to use all the time i ain't got a clue what they're doing just use one of them but i like to do mine by hand so basically i'm grabbing that loop pulling about an inch back pushing it back on itself and then that'll naturally create that loop for you and i want to put that through there two times so nice and simple so i'm going to go through once and then twice and there's all knots make sure you're giving it a bit of a motion pull that down we don't need it to be a strong uh, strong we don't need it to be a big loop just nice and small and that's your loop created for your your hot lens the next thing i want to do and this is what richard is going to get zoomed in on is our twizzle boom so basically you've got that long bit of line that we left 
We've got our rubber stops there, so I'm push them up a little bit more. Now, I'm going to try and be as still as I can with this. So you zoomed in on that, Rich. So basically, what I'm doing with my right fingers is twisting towards you, and what I'm doing with my left finger and thumb is twisting towards me. So I'm counteracting it and going opposites. And what you'll see is it'll create... See, it's starting to twist already as I'm twisting one way with one hand and another way with another hand. I want it roughly around sort of, I don't know, six inches, seven inches, something like that. If you find there's sort of like a, a bit of a gap when you're twisting, just pull back and then start twisting again and that'll create it so it goes nice and tight. Very tight! And that's what you want. Don't worry if it sort of like kinks off a little bit. It should stay, stay nice and straight, but don't worry if it kinks off. It's just a case of just keeping twisting and pulling so everything's nice and tight. And then what this acts like is a, is a boom so you don't get tough, so you know, other folks, you don't get tangled, but you don't get tangled. It, I'm going to say it, it doesn't take a, you know, it's not, not confused. I might look, make it look a, a bit complex, but honestly, folks, it's so easy to do. Really, really simple. And it's so important that you're doing it rather than just putting your hook length straight onto them, that loop. So once you get like six inches, which is that, what I'm going to do now, so you've got that, is chap that on my finger and thumb, and I'm going to create exactly the same uh, knot as I've done for my hook length. It's a double overhand. So pull back, twist that round, so you've got that loop, and I want to put that through there two times. So one, bring it through, and two, bring it through. And then pull that tight, and then again, moisten it, and that's what you're left with. Yeah, so you can see there, nice twizzle boom, and we've got our little loop on the end for our hook length. So I'm going to trim that off. We don't need that. Get rid of that in that bag. And then I'm going to pull these rubbers down to there. And then I'm going to get me snap link swivel. There he is. So you can see now that that is standing proud. Yeah, so when I put me, um, I'm going to put my feeder on, Let's get my feeder somewhere. Let's use a 20 gram today because we want to get some bait in. We'll put him on. I'll just show you how, how tight everything is away from your, your feeder. So it's keeping your hook length. Ooh. Oh, he slid off. Come here, you. Doing everything back to front for you, lovely lot. So you can see now what I mean by that uh, twizzle boom and how it's keeping everything well away from, uh, from your feeders. You, you just don't get tangles. Now, the, the easiest thing with this setup as well, folks, is on that, I'm just going to get one of our pre-tied six inch up lengths and put it on and that's it, you're fishing. Now, obviously that's these kind of waters. I'm not going to go through sort of natural waters where you need longer up lengths. This is purely a commercial setup and it is like the easiest way of fishing ever in your wide world. So that for me is ready. The first thing that you want to do though, which we're going to cover in a sec, is getting your distance. Now, if you were just going out pleasure fishing, you could get your distance with a feeder, but match conditions, you'd have to put a little ledger bomb on because people might think you're feeding. Um, so what I'll do now, I'm going to change that for a bomb. And I'm going to show you how you get your distance with a clip. You don't want to put your hook length on yet. And then what I'm going to do is put this feeder back on, cast out a couple of times, get some bait in, and then we can put our hook on and then go and catch some fishes. So join me in a sec and we'll uh, get our distance. Okay then folks, so I've changed my feeder for a ledger bomb because the first thing I want to do is get my distance. Now, I don't want to be fishing, you know, right down the middle, uh, so to speak, in that horrible sill. I want to choose somewhere uh, on a bit of a slope, a bit of hard ground. And obviously with an island, that's what you're going to get. And also with the sun, if that's due to come out, there's a little bit of shade over there as well. So I want to be looking to cast couple of meters away from the island something like that i don't want to go right tight it's not like i'm carp fishing i need to get as uh, tight as i can over so what i'm going to do certainly casting wise remember we've been through this before let out a little bit of line you know sort of three or four foot nice and slow behind your back get your distance and then sort of stop it there probably want to go i don't know maybe a little bit further but we'll see what's what there now what i'm looking to do so i've got an ounce uh, ledger bomb on what i'm looking to do first and foremost is just to check if there's anything sort of like horrible and nasty there yeah if it's plugging into anything uh the bottom it should be a little bit bouncy where it's going to be obviously hard ground coming away from the island if it just sort of like plugs in which it will do in the silt at the bottom there it's plugging in a little bit so that's not somewhere where i'd want to fish you see how it's plugged into the silt there and you'll only get that by using sort of an ounce plus ledger bomb um so i know i'm on like a little bit of a slope there i'm just gonna have a, another cast i didn't clip up that time I'm just gonna have another cast 
again nice little bit of line out get your marker which for me in this instance right, i want to clip up there that's a nicer nicer cast and again just let make sure it's running off that uh, that island so it's going blah 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 like that blah 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 and then it should eventually just get stuck in that silt there yeah so i know i'm sort of like two or three meters up that slope which is perfect for me i'm happy with that so the next thing i'm going to do in fact before we do that let me talk you through my little baby setup here so what i've got go on richard get in i've got a little little feeder rest in fact let me put that rod in there so you can see i've got a little um rod rest here that i can put me my rod on nice and easy yeah, so it's keeping my hands free. Should I want to do anything else? Should I have anything else on the go? Bearing in mind, we're just really fishing today, but I might want to, you know, be pinging bait out left, right and centre because you all know how much I love to feed. But having something like this just takes the, the, the stress away. You know what I mean? We're after bream and skimmers. It's not like we're roach fishing where we need the rod on our, uh, our knee, hitting them lightning fast bites. We're waiting for that tip to get pulled round. And then if you look in front of me, I've got one of uh, our extendable feeder arms um with like a, a grip grip mesh rod rest so that's holding my rod in place and it's just absolutely perfect tip just nice and low to the water just just so everything's nice and easy pretty much you know what i mean everything should be coming off your box obviously rod rest and bank sticks if you've got like attachments on your box it makes it so much easier so little things like that more manageable right so that's enough waffling i'm going to get some baiting now I can only go off what the session was like last time and it was absolutely flipping amazing um but again you know a few weeks has passed since that and fish being fish who knows what they're going to do the wild animals aren't they folks you know what i mean so i'm not going to put a load of bait in to start with i'm just going to put a couple of feeder fulls now what i've got mixed up i've got some of our sunny baits uh, super cush ground bait because it's only sort of three foot of the absolute most out there you know um a nice light ground bait that sort of like pretty much explodes on impact is what's needed for today yeah similar to what i used last time so super crush i've got some two mil uh, pellets because obviously bream and skimmers absolutely adore the two mil micros all i've done them completely soaked them for 50 seconds to a minute and then drained them out of the water they're good to go and then i've got i've got some dead reds and then i've got some dead white maggots and that's it no worms casters anything like that just keep it simple folks bream they look they love bait you know what i mean and you can catch them on the simplest of bait so corn yeah corn would work anything like that but just stick to maggots ground bait and a few pellets and you won't go wrong so feeder wise because we've not got any wind or anything today uh, i'm just going for a nice a 20 gram feeder now when would you use a cage feeder over say um a block end feed you know like the traditional sort of like plastic ones like the you know the three old four old things like that if i was using the plastic feeders like proper traditional i don't even know if they still do them anymore they, they must still do them. i've got loads and hundreds of them uh you'd use them in sort of deeper water where you want to make sure that when you're casting in your bait ends up on the bottom so when you drag it along the bottom your bait's coming out Cage feeders for me lend themselves more to commercial fisheries where you know you want that quick release of baits so you attra uh, attracting the fish in you know a lot of commercials you'll fish in general they're not going to be overly deep so you want to make sure that bait's coming out pretty quick okay so first things first what we're going to do i'm going to put a few dead reds in in fact let me let me bring it round there so you can see uh what can i do let me get another little uh, little bobby bait tub so you can see exactly what i'm doing i'm just going to put a few few dead reds in there first yeah so you can see the reds in there i'm gonna plug that so you can see the reds in the feeder the red maggots the next thing i'm gonna do is get some ground bait i'm gonna plug it both ends and give that a squeeze so you can see there you've got like a like a red magwai sandwich so i've got the ground bait both ends with the maggots in the middle yep nice and simple so i'm gonna give it two of them to start with again same distance of line out get your marker cast it in bring it back feather it down and then nice and quick just give it a big big wallop to release all that bait i mean pretty much a lot of it will come out sort of like as soon as it hits the bottom anyway and then give that a nice nice big in bring it back and i'm going to do exactly the same again but i'm going to put micros in this time so just a full a full one of micros just to get quite a bit of bait and give it a squeeze and then that's good to go again so this is why you don't put a hook length on at first folks yeah just want to get some bait in first that's it feather it down give it a big but dying and then that's it we're good to go so i'm gonna get me up them out 
and then I'm going to put one on. You can see exactly I'm putting these hooks on. In fact, let me uh, twist round and get, so you can see what I mean, folks, straight out of the packet. So we've got 14's GPMB to 0.15, no messing about. Obviously, there's some massive carp in here, but you never know what you're going to encounter. You know what I mean? The, the bream go up to sort of like seven or eight pound. They'll pull back a bit and they're not, they're not bothered. They're just coming to that bait. Don't make a blind bit of difference. So just fish heavy. So big hooks and strong line. So six inch shut length there. And this is why we've done our little baby loop. Yeah, so all I'm going to do, you know, it's easy on it, is put my hook length loop over that main line one. Grab my hook, put that through the main line loop and then pull that, pull that through, get that knot through, there we go. Dead said simple, I'll bring that feeder down so you can see exactly how long everything is. Spiders everywhere, and there, there's a finished, finished rig. So obviously when that goes in, this, the maggots are coming down straight over the top. So obviously the fish are coming around, grubbing in the bait. They see your hook bait by it, and then that's it, it's just nailed. Now, last time, obviously this is where experimentation comes, that's a big word for me, where the experimenting comes in when you're fishing. Last time it was far better to cast in and just leave it. Very rare I sink the line on these kind of venues anyway, folks, when it's pretty shallow. I would if it was a big wind on it, but basically most of the fish last time, you cast in, put your rod on the rest and they'd attack it straight away. Normally what I like to do with, uh, with feeder fishing, this setup of feeder fishing, not Tommy Pickering's way up method, don't move the feeder, is once I've cast in, tighten down to the feeder with my rod under the water and give it a big whack up so i'm sinking on my line and then i'll move the feeder you know sort of like well depending on how long my hook length is uh but that was the wrong thing to do last time because the fish were coming instantly in on the bait and then taking your hook bait as it's falling through the water so i'm going to try that this time to start with so nice and simple first thing i'm going to do is get some get some maggots on so three or four maggots on the on a hook i'm going to go for three first so everything through the point yeah three red maggots through the tip and then i'm going to plug this with some red maggots and ground bait don't want to really put any more micros in yet oh we've got myself don't want to put any micros in yet um just because i don't know what the response is i don't want them to get too daft so I'll feather that in and then have that rod straight on there and then we'll get ready and see what happens it's just uh, it's one of my favorite ways of fishing the old wide world folks i absolutely adore it might take a little bit for the fish to come in who knows or it might be that i need to you know um put more bait in oh see, see what i mean see that already it's exactly the same as last time folks. they're just on it straight away now you need to make sure these are on is he on and that's a little babby fish that's on yeah a little babby fish like a roach or a perch or a goujon or something like that but it just shows you folks you know what i mean third shuck we bait on we get a fish straight away and what is he he is a little roach little roach yeah little babby fish so two of them maggots have been have been snotted but we'll change them again now if you are getting mired what i would say if you are getting mired with obviously small fish that's when you can change what you're putting through the feeder obviously all to start off with um, I just it's all about attracting fish first, so that's why we're putting the maggots through. Yeah, obviously fish meal ground bait, fish see the fish meal ground bait day in, day out, or fish meal products, you know, pellets and what have you. Just wait for that reed to come through. So that's why obviously I'm going down the fish meal. Oh, he's on. That is ridiculous, isn't it? It's just this place, folks, honestly. Bait and all. If you've never been, you've got to come here. It's just amazing. This feels like a bigger roach. Now you see how I'm playing the fish, it's basically a point and wind job. Um, my drag's set right just in case, but what I don't want to do is lift my rod eye like you would traditionally on deeper venues. What is it? What's it going to be, Rich? It's a, uh, is it a skimmer? It is, little babby skimmer. Oh, it's just this venue, this venue. So that's our intended species. Second chuck, look at them beauties beautiful sort of eight ounce skimmer absolutely amazing but they go sort of like 27 times bigger than that in here like ridiculous now one thing i would say folks uh obviously 
don't chuck in with the same bait on if it's sort of like proper snotted. If you've got slime on your line, which obviously you will have for skimmers, make sure it's all off. <laughs> but on menus like this, I don't think it matter. I really don't. Now, obviously, experimentation. We don't need to experiment at the minute because we've had two casts and two fish. But if you were getting mad with them little babby fish, little babby roach, then cut sort of like uh, your natural feed out. So if you're feeding worms, cut that out, cast as maggots, and then go more for corn pellets things like that something that'll attract sort of the bigger fish but if you just want to get out folks which which i love doing you know doing pleasure fishing getting out there getting bites this is the way forward it's so good and you've seen how positive the bites are because we've only got a short hook length on the fish are attacking that uh, that bait as soon as it lands so I'll fill that with maggots again plug it with ground bait and it's just you just have the best days fishing ever hey up oh, we've hooked our landing there we're getting too giddy aren't we so see how, see how many maggots are in that. You know what I mean? We've proper loaded it. That was a bit wayward, but I'm still going to leave it, so I'm getting too giddy. A little bit to the right, that one. Sure, he's still going to go. So what I'm doing, I'm not like sinking my uh, me rod tip and bringing that line up to sink it or anything like that, sink the line. I'm just getting it straight on the rest and waiting for it. Now, it's important when you are starting off that you're putting a bit of bait in. See, there's one on it already. Um, so cast wise it's important to fish with one of them folks maybe one that works and you can see the oh you can see the digits on this one rich that'll do you can see it uh fish with a watch so i want to be casting every sort of three minutes to start with you know increasing a bit of bait and um, that might stay for you know how long is it going to stay is he on yeah he's on <laughs> oh my days folks oh that's a better one so you see keeping that rod nice and low yeah don't want to lift it high, I want to keep it nice and low. Um, <laughs> I just can't get over this venue. It's just... I can't... Yeah, I don't even know what it was on about then. Oh yeah, frequency of casting, every three minutes. Every fish that we had last time, the fish came within sort of 90 seconds. If you left it in longer, all your bait had been eaten, basically. You know what I mean? All your fish came really quick. So it's important that you're understanding um, how often to cast. Now, as a rule, every three minutes for 15, 20 minutes, get a bit of bait in, and then it might be five, six, seven minutes, something. You know, if you obviously, if the venue's not as prolific. But it's just... I've, I've certainly never been to a commercial venue like this, like bathing. It's just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And I've not even tried, like, pole or wag or anything like that yet, folks. You know what I mean? I've only ever fish feeder just amazing look at the size of them oh my days honestly folks look at that so <laughs> look at the state of that it's like three and a half pound on our third chalk we've not even got going yet but right i am gonna get my head down Catch loads of fish like that, and then just say to you, lovely lot, get yourselves to bathe and all. But obviously, it's going to work anywhere. This style of feeder fishing, so simple. Keep that bait going in, keep casting, and then you will be rewarded with fish like that in no time. Get on it, folks. Yeah! Right, you lads, very, very sorry to interrupt your video watching. How but dare you? Quickly, if you haven't already noticed, we have managed to write a book, haven't we? Yes, we have, Which Jamie. It's full of all our very bestest methods and features or whatever else we do on this wonderful subject of fishing. So if you haven't had a look already, go and have a look at winningways.shop and buy one for yourself.